To me, the most important part of game development is actually knowing who you're making a game for. Most games start out as sort of like a selfish vision of a game developer's idea for a game. They make it for themselves. And like Lens Island, my game started off in the same way. But then the crucial part of game development is like, how do you take that idea and actually translate it into a game that's made for the people playing it, for the community, and not for you? So I poured through every toxic Steam post saying how much they hate me and every positive Discord message. I watched hundreds of YouTube videos and streams and all these different forum posts from around the, the internet I looked at. And this was all in search of one thing. That one thing just being the truth. The people that play my game Lens Island, like what do they want? Like what do all of you actually want? And what is our game missing? So here I am putting that research into action. We're actually working on four massive updates to Lens Island, all completely shaped by the community feedback and by what the players actually want. We we'll also added one really important, pivotal feature to Lens Island. This is a bit of a game changer. People have been requesting it since day one. I'll talk a little bit more about it later in the video, but it's a pretty big deal. Originally, I made Lens Island for me. I wanted to make what I believe to be the perfect game. So I blended all of my favorite mechanics, such as creative base building, an open world, hand-built, yet still procedurally generated map that you could explore, uh, like really intense dungeon crawler action that also has like a lot of depth to a combat system, but then like in-depth farming mechanics and farming progression and like collectibles and skill tree progression and pets and character customization and weapons and, and what I thought was my just, you know, unique selfish idea ended up beginning a journey, like a journey to actually take my own idea for a game and develop it into a much bigger game that everybody can enjoy. It's been a long journey building Lens Island. I started as a solo dev like seven years ago making Lens Island. Uh, around two years ago, we launched into early access just with two developers. Uh, and now we've grown a little bit. We're getting ready for our multiplayer release later this year and it's developed by around five or six people. So let's break it down. We have big updates happening over the next three months or so, and I'm going to go through them, explain what we're adding, all based on your feedback. The first community update launching at the end of March will include four new languages. So we're adding Portuguese, Russian, French, and Korean with full support uh, to Lens Island. Uh, and just so you know, you can already play Lens Island in German, Spanish, Thai, Chinese, uh, of course, English as well. And this is really due to our amazing community members that have helped us translating and sort of actually, I guess, proofreading all of the work. Big, big thank you to everybody on screen. You guys are awesome. We love you. Thank you so much. Also making the resource mining outposts upgradable in this update. This was actually a vote that I cast on Discord and Steam forums. I actually didn't even think about making upgradable. I just said, do you want the resource outposts to be better and more expensive or, or cheaper and more shit? <laughs> and everyone said, that's a terrible idea. Why don't you do both? Why don't we just make them upgradable? So when you first buy it, it can be cheaper and not produce as many materials, but then you can spend materials to upgrade it. They mine even more stuff but then they become more expensive and maybe the hordes that actually attack them during harvest moons become harder. And then you can upgrade them several levels from there, becoming more and more expensive, but mining more materials for you and actually having more gameplay because there's harder and harder ways of enemies to defend. And suddenly like this one resource outpost in one location has like this whole progression of content tied to it. So that's why asking the community <laughs> is so good because you guys think of ideas that we don't think of and here you are. Here's a solution added into the game, just like you asked. So then we have the completionist update. This includes a starter guide and tutorial for new players, a questing system for the mid game, late game, all throughout the whole gameplay, and then a whole new collections page to keep track of all of your progress. A common bit of feedback that we got is how do we actually get started in Lens Island and how do I keep track of my progress to sort of the mid game and the late game? Lens Island's always been this sort of open choice, open world kind of game. I think it's somewhat lacked some sort of central progression and not even like a tutorial, just a way to sort of like keep in check how you're doing and have something to show for it that's more than just like your house and what dungeons you've unlocked. So there's a brand new quest in UI and you can actually get cool rewards uh, for performing quests throughout the game. You can pin them to the main HUD and sort of keep track of them at any point. Uh, make, which makes it really easy to sort of work towards goals in Lens Island now and keep track of your progress. 
Uh, and then we also have the collections page in the compendium. So you can see your unlock progress of every weapon and tool and cosmetic. Every kind of upgrade and unlock in the game are all tracked here. So all of you 100 percenters, I got you. You can keep track and keep progress of all of this stuff now. In general, Lens Island's just going to feel like it has a much stronger progression and the game is actually sort of communicating to you how you're going and showing you rewards and sort of keeping you along for the journey. Okay, the controversial one, camera orbiting. So let, let me explain this in, in full because it's undoubtedly the most hot topic to do of Lens Island, which I did not expect. Currently, Lens Island has a fixed camera, just like Diablo or any other kind of top-down game because it just worked so well. But I also, I, I understand why people want it to change. Let me just start off by saying this was not an easy feature to add. I know it seems easy on the surface, just unlock the camera, let me orbit around throughout gameplay, but it's so much more than that. I personally handmade every single dungeon, every island, every stick and stone in Lens Island, I hand placed. And I hand placed it with the expectation that it would be viewed from only one angle. So I had to go through the whole of our game and yeah, overhaul it just to make the camera work. So I really hope you appreciate this because it took so long for me to do. On top of the fact that you can just freely orbit the camera, there's also free zoom levels. So you can just freely zoom the camera in or out at any time throughout gameplay, which also fixes another big point of feedback, which is people were using like the screenshot mode camera to sort of like look up and try to get a pan around the map, sort of, I guess, cheating in like a weird way. Now we just basically built that feature into normal gameplay. So you can just do that normally without having to do some weird screenshot mode trick. If you do like the fixed camera, you can just choose to just not use the camera orbiting and it's the exact same game. And finally, the Frozen Lands update. Now, like this is a really big update, so I won't go through every detail in this video. Frozen Lands is us expanding the map with a giant ring of ice encasing the whole world. There'll be new Arctic biomes, cherry blossom forests, snow fortresses, uh, as well as enemy strongholds scattered all around the map. There is like a big expansion and a big change to the whole Lens Island world. Even in your map right now, there'll be a bunch of new islands that pop up that don't currently exist. This will also carry across to the underground too. So there's gonna be new frozen caves and parts of the cave system are getting an overhaul. There's gonna be a new Damascus steel weapon tier. There's a huge new enchanting upgrade. Uh, there's new enemies, there's new animals, there's new pets to collect, a new major boss, new armor sets. There's tea making. I'm trying to remember, there's a, a new wind sled vehicle so you can drift around the ice fields. And like, that's honestly just like not even half of it. There is so much new stuff happening in this update. Um, you can actually get early access to testing our builds if you join our Patreon, like a little humble plug. Yeah, it's a big one. It's a big update and I am very, very excited for it. So if you wanna actually continue to improve Lens Island and help us shape the game, leave a comment on the video, leave a Steam review. I read through all the Steam reviews and I take them very seriously. I look at all the comments, I read through all the Discord messages. Everywhere that you can leave feedback to Lens Island, I read and I compile it into notes and I use it to actually shape the future of Lens Island because that's how games should be made. <laughs> I'm not making this game for me, I'm making this game for all of you and I'm constantly on the journey of becoming a better game developer and trying to include and consider the community as much as possible. And if you're new here and you haven't played Lens Island before, you can play it right now. It's probably a good time to jump in because we're about to release so many cool updates. So there's just all of this fun stuff to look forward to in the near future. Uh, but yeah, it's on Steam right now. Maybe there's a sale going on, maybe there's not, depending on when you're watching the video. And um, yeah, as always, I hope you have an amazing day. I'll see you in the next one.